Eurovision 1988, but Sal Lacasio in the goal is making them a contender for 92. With consistent saves like this, he keeps his team in every game. Match that kind of effort with a brand new crop of rookies led by Seth Tierney, an offensive star. He joins Andy Krauss in the midfield and other players who have raised their level of play to a championship caliber, giving this team hopes for the playoffs. Meanwhile, in Pittsburgh, a team is now rewriting their record books with a different style, a running gun style, but they haven't been able to score consistently, and their frustrations have been shown by their offensive star, number 13, John Wilson, scoring, but not often enough. He's joined by a new star, Ed Stevenson, as this team pushes for one last gas. exclusive coverage of the major indoor lacrosse league tonight from the nassau coliseum the pittsburgh bulls take on the hometown new york saints well the coliseum is filling up hi everybody i'm lee felsbo joined by bill barroza for tonight's game bill this is a critical game for both teams the team from pittsburgh having to win to stay in the hunt with detroit for that divisional playoff but new york is very, very much up against the wall in a very tight race in the American League Division standings. Let's take a look at those standings. You can see two losses right now. They're tied for first, but a very complicated tiebreaker procedure will have them locked into a battle for the championship. They have to win tonight. And they've got uh, a couple of good players on the team that, that know they have to win. I spoke to them during the week. They had a great practice uh, Wednesday night, and Rob Cognato is their leading scorer, and we're going to count on him to do a lot of scoring for them uh, this evening. He's got 10 goals, but he is supported by a cast that can score from all over the roster, maybe specifically the feeder from behind, McEntee. Yeah, Tim McEntee is, is a true leader on this team, and uh, he does something unique. He does feed a lot from behind, which is not commonplace in this game. So we'll look to Tim to sc uh, score some goals as well as do a lot of feeding tonight. Okay, now also with him, again, I talked about a cast that can score a lot. The Cummings brothers, one of the most powerful co brother combinations in the Major Under Cross League, Bob and Mike Cummings. Both of them have fantastic hard shots from the outside, and I'll tell you, they're very deceptive. They've got one of the hardest shots in the league, and they can do a good job from the outside tonight. All right, now, Bill, when you look at Pittsburgh, this is a team that really hasn't found the secret this year. They are still struggling to find their stride. They've got good talent on the roster. Maybe the biggest success they've had throughout the league is with this team. Overall, they're 2-1. and one. Let's look at this graphic, and in this Coliseum, they're undefeated. That will work well for them, but they really are a team that's a little unsettled. Well, they've got uh, some. They've got a lot of talent. No, there's no question about it, and they just haven't reached their potential this year. You know, with the record, one win. But Butch Marino is a guy that can bring them out of those doldrums, and we look to him for some scoring tonight. Butch Marino with maybe the hardest shot in the league from the outside. Bobby Martino supports him, and he's having a sensational year. Well, Bobby's eight and eight, and he's got a fantastic. He's going. He's doing very, very well. But again, they've got to do it tonight against the tough goalie in Sal Lacasio. Bill, I've got to ask you about Dave Petromala. This is a guy who's a team leader. He was the best in the world, the World Games in Australia last year. He just came back from an injury. He could be a key to this game for Pittsburgh. Well, I spoke to him before the game. He had an ankle injury, and he, he feels healthy, and he's ready to go. He doesn't talk a lot about, about his play, but he's, he's the best in the world, and we'll see that tonight. We'll see if Petromala can make the difference for Pittsburgh. Both teams have to win. We'll be back with the opening face-off in just a minute. Tonight's major indoor lacrosse league game of the week is brought to you by Coors Light. It's the right beer now for M-I-L-L -L fans. By U.S. Air. U.S. Air begins with you. By Reebok. Life is short. Play hard. By Brian Lacrosse Equipment. The power behind the game. And by GMC, General Motors is putting quality on the road.
back to the Nassau Coliseum. Lee Felsmo, Bill Barroza. We are just underway. Critical game. You see the Saints against the black and gold team from Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh gets the first face off. Klausner now with the ball. Bill Barroza, he faced off. This is his hometown. Just for that opening face off. An emotional ploy by Dennis Way. It worked. They get first possession. And Ronnie Klausner is a big guy. And uh, I tell you, it'll be interesting to see if they use him the entire evening for facing off. Worstell comes in, number 40. He just got back from the injury himself. He was out for three games. Pittsburgh still with the ball. The first goal the shot, though, turned away. Second shot now on Sal Acasio. Ball finally back to New York. You know what's interesting, Leaf, is just starting off, is the fact that Pittsburgh's already got three shots on goal, and one of their keys was they've got to start shooting more. We'll take a look at that as we get into this game, but that is definitely... If you want to summarize their woes, it's that they just do not shoot enough. They are last in the league as far as shots taken. Right there, Kevin Bilger, another key to Pittsburgh's potential win tonight. He is starting only his second game, Bill, this season. The last game he started this year, they won. That was their only victory against Philadelphia. He was sensational in one half of play, only allowed three goals. He could be one of the keys to their win. Well, Kevin Bilger was, uh, was on two world championship teams with the Philadelphia Wings, and so he's a leader on on this team and they'll count them on him for that leadership. Johnny Wilson picks up that ball. The Canadian box player who they count on so heavily for scoring has not really been a factor this year. Watch him, number 13. He just got that loose ball, but a 30-second violation turns it back to New York. But number 13 for Pittsburgh right there, John Wilson. He only has three goals in the year, and Bill, he's got to score for Pittsburgh to be effective in offense. He does, and up oh, there's the guy you're talking about, Kevin Bilger, playing a starting off real strong in the goal for Pittsburgh. Bilger, one of only 12 players who have played every year uh, in the major indoor lacrosse league. So Bilger entering his sixth season. Well, I had a chance to speak to uh, Coach Dennis Way before the uh, game, matter of fact, a couple nights ago, and I asked him if he was going to split time, and he said as long as Kevin's playing well, he's going to go with him the whole game. It's too important, and they can't afford a loss here. Forms now with his line in there, takes a shot. Form is running on that third line for Pittsburgh. Overall team strength for New York, a lot of team speed. And now Mike Cummings will try to generate some of that team speed. They're playing a much bigger team in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh possibly the biggest team in the league. Well, they also, Pittsburgh also has to concentrate on their defense tonight. They've been giving up a lot of goals, and they did against Buffalo last game. So they've got to concentrate on good, strong team defense tonight. Well, there's a good example of team defense. Ed Stevenson got a stick on Cummings as he took the shot. Ball comes back. Now Stevenson wide open. They can't get the ball to him. They'll check that of Marino's stick, and a whistle blows the play dead. It'll be given back to Pittsburgh, but a good defensive play by the Saints. A fast break by Ed Stevenson. A potential shot on Lacasio was turned back. So it looked like coming out of the box, he was going to lay him out from behind, but he held up. Otherwise, that would have been a penalty for New York. This is Butch Marino giving it inside. And a hard shot from Willard turns for his left. Now he gets it for a right-hand shot with that good team defense by Huff. Willard gets the underhand shot. Not much steam on it. Lacasio, an easy pickup for him. I'll tell you, I'm impressed with Sal Lacasio. Every game I watch him play, he gets stronger and stronger, and he, he just has so much confidence in the goal there. All-American many times in the New England area. This is John Reese, the best midfielder in the country. He played for Yale his senior year, broke Gary Gates' record for goal scored. He's in on the crease down number 16. This is Bob Cummings with the ball. That dynamic combination, Bob and brother Mike. Bob's got better moves to the inside, and look at Bilger, picks up another save. And Marino gets it safely up to Petromala. Interference? No, they're calling a pick, a moving pick. The ball will go back to New York. Kevin Bilger, the goalie for Pittsburgh, is very active outside of the goal, and you'll see him try to try to get involved in the game early, and, and leave. he's the one that caused that turnover. Tremendous experience. The tendency now is to go to a Canadian goalie, but when Pittsburgh or when Philadelphia had their first championship, he was their goalie. He has tremendous experience, as you mentioned. He's been on a championship team and has been in this league for six years. Pittsburgh now making a move to Kevin Bilger to try to get this team on the right track. Mike Smith 
Another Long Island, or from the New York area, Mike Smith, play at the University of Virginia. This is DeMarc Gold, who is another uh, six-year veteran in this major indoor lacrosse league. Mark Gold now comes and looks to the crease. An excellent shot, bounces past Lacasio. And a score, Pittsburgh on first. Volk, that's a rookie for uh, the Pittsburgh Bulls. And Volk was a late replacement. Some of the lineup shuffling as we look at Lacasio. Volk finds himself in the lineup, and the rookie paid off. Well, it was, a, it was a good shot, and it was right between what we call the five spot, between the goalie's legs. And it came off of a cut. And when I spoke to uh, the Pittsburgh Bulls before the game, they said, we've got to start to move. We've got to play. Well, we, we're playing a cutting offense. And you can see the feeder here, cutter, shot score. Just a very, very good play. And Salacasio got a piece of that. So the second faceoff goes to New York. One to nothing. The Pittsburgh Bulls get that early lead, and they need that early lead. First Pittsburgh Bulls by number 20. Team that is first of the season. Seems to have a mental breakdown at least one quarter of every game. That Mike Tyson and Bruce Sasha, he's, he's made that famous, and uh, a lot of other teams have since picked that up. No question about it. He had a sensational year at Yale. With the middle linebacker on their football team as well, he can really lay the hits in there. Watch for John Reese to be an enforcer physically for the New York Saints. Ball given back to the Pittsburgh squad. This is Mark Gold, who was traded from Boston early this season. Started the year in Boston, went down. Pittsburgh in a trade. We might see Mark Gold doing some facing off for Pittsburgh a little bit more as the evening progresses. Especially since their face-off specialist uh, is not on the roster for this particular game. Stevenson now coming in. Checked out. Beautiful check out by McCabe. McCabe, one of the best defensive players for Syracuse ever. McCabe now on the front end of a fast break looking for a shot. He takes a left-handed shot, but Bilger stretches out to make the save. What well, was interesting, Leaf, is coming down the floor was two defensemen, Jerry Burns and, and Pat McCabe. Martino takes a shot. Lacasio makes a save on the other end, and they try to pick it up here. A little bit tentative was Butch Marino. Can't get it. Manley, another six-year vet, pulls the ball in and gives it to Horn from Washington College. You know, New York's come out a little bit, uh, as you said, tentative. They look nervous. They, I think they're, they're probably trying too hard because they know they have to win tonight. Nine minutes left. One to nothing. Pittsburgh leads. Pittsburgh has to be really looking for a lot of help if they're to win the national division. Detroit way on top there. New York, again, a lot tougher competition in the American division, but they, too, have to win every game and hope to win a tiebreaker. For, for all the equipment that a Golden Wears leaf, you just saw Sal Lacoste do a very acrobatic move there. Fast break coming down for New York. Borges, Donnie Borges likes the right hand. He'll circle the goal probably here. Taken down from behind. That'll be a two-minute penalty. Donnie Borges, Bill, wants the right hand. He came down. He had a left-handed shot. He elected to take it around behind the goal. He gets the penalty. There'll be a power play for New York. And we come back in just a moment with Pittsburgh up by one. Well, you can see Donnie Borges. Donnie Borges comes around a goal, and he's always looking for his right hand. You knew he's going to go that way. And again, just a, there was a no question about that penalty. So I saw Donnie Borges before the game. He promised me he'd take a left-handed shot tonight. That wasn't the time he gave it a shot, though. Here we are in the power play. McEntee goes behind the goal. Pittsburgh being very physical. We'll start now with Borges on the far side to Mike Cummings. Borges slides across trying to get the defense to shift. Mike Cummings drops it in low. Nicholas playing right on the crease. But I'll tell you what's interesting, Leaf, about this uh, man down team is this is one of the best, the best in the entire league with Dave Petromala, Ron Klausner, uh, Hodgson. I mean, these guys were all first-team All-Americans in college. A tremendous defensive force out there, and they've done their job getting the ball back to Kevin Bilger. There's Bob Engelke right now on the sideline. Tremendous job of coaching in the win against Philadelphia. Their last win was tied with a minute to go. They turned back Philly. They got a timeout call to play and scored to win. I don't want to remember that game because I called the wrong play at the end. We were down there right in the heat of the battle on the sideline. Here comes coming, strips the ball from Marino. And then trying to get some of the speed going. McCabe can outrun Martino. Gets it inside. Oh, beautiful feed. Tremendous shot and a goal by Cognato. That's the guy we said was going to score tonight, so that's his first one of the evening. The interesting thing, Leaf, about the New York team is you can never count them out. Pat McCabe makes a beautiful behind-the-back pass. Again, Rob Cognato knew he was going to get hit after that shot. 
why Pat McKay made it behind the back, I think maybe to throw off some some defender, uh, not to think he was going to pass the ball, but again, it was a great shot, and uh, there wasn't much of a chance for Kevin Bilger there. With 7-17 left in the first quarter, the game is tied at one. That's what New York needed, is they needed that goal, and I think that got the crowd going, and now the crowd's just chanting, and uh, they'll start playing a little bit harder now. Two out of three face-offs, one by New York. This is Mark Gold playing defense on Donnie Borges. Two guys have seen a lot of cross wars together. John Wilson can't get the ball. It's loose again, and Adignato, who just scored the goal, picks it up. Nobody playing tough defense, and Bill just swallows it up. Puts it right in the belly. Launches it off to Wilson. Can he pick it up? No. Look at the speed of Wilson being hurt by an ankle injury that he had at the beginning of this year, Bill. You can see he had no speed to go underneath of that lob by Kevin Bilger. And, and I'll tell you, it wasn't necessarily a good pass, but he's got a bad knee, and I talked to him tonight, and he was concerned about how, how healthy he was going to be for the entire game. You know, we see this long pass from Kevin. Again, it wasn't that bad, but the fact is he's got a bad wheel, but he's, he's a good shooter, so it's worth having him out there. He admits he's not in great condition, and the stats show it. Here's a tremendous shooting player, a key to their offense, John Wilson is, and he only has three goals coming into this game, so that's a big hole they have to fill on Pittsburgh's team. One to one, 6-14 left, ball back to New York. This is the guy we talked about earlier in the game that's going to look to feed the ball. McAtee gets it back into Cummings. Bob Cummings takes a shot, ricochets off the shoulder of Bilger. Bilger has looked exceptionally strong in the goal here. I think he's really given him some confidence. This team looks more comfortable with Bilger in the goal to me. They do. They uh, tell you Pittsburgh looks great tonight. And again, 1-1 one, one game. Uh, you, you would have thought that it wouldn't have been this close early on with the speed that New York has, but they're playing with confidence. We've mentioned the need for team defense by Pittsburgh, and I think that's another thing that has been evident with 5.35 left in the first quarter. Pittsburgh is playing good team defense tonight so far. They thought they needed to stop New York's fast break, and they have so far. Petromala, number 43, tries to dip under the defense, 30-second violation. Pittsburgh probably has more of those than anybody else in the major indoor lacrosse league. Well, I was impressed with that over-the-head move, because that's a, that's a move Dave Petromala is known for, and Jerry Burns, another great defenseman, an All-American from University of Massachusetts, took that ball away. Of course, in the major indoor lacrosse league, everybody's an offensive player, and you don't get a whole lot of opportunity to show those defensive skills. We've seen a couple attempts tonight. That dramatic overhead check here comes Butchie Marino. He's got a great outside shot, but it's three on one now, or I should say three defenders on the one fast breaking player, Marino. Back to Petromala. He's a little bit tired. Two gassers, two full field sprints. Let's see if he looks for a substitution or keeping that line on the field. 13 on the shot clock. Morstel comes in, and Lacasio, who really hasn't been that tested in the goal, comes up with that save. Here comes Pat McCabe. It's two on one. He's got somebody in front of him. He'll Shoot! Pilger makes a tremendous save. Pat, Pat McCabe is, is not one of the uh, best shooters on the team because, again, All-American defenseman. Here's a critical mistake, Lee, but they called no goal for, I guess, being in the crease. No goal. He was in the crease, and the ball goes back to Wilson, who comes in with a little fake, dinks it back, and that's a goal on the other end. Pittsburgh gets a goal from Mark Gold. Wilson had the fast break. He didn't get the ball last time. While New York was still thinking about the play on the other end, Bill, Pittsburgh took it right down the throat of Lacasio. He makes one big save, but Mark Gold picks up the rebound. But you know, Leaf, that's a sign of a mature team, an experienced player, and the fact is that, that Pittsburgh didn't go to sleep on that play. They said, hey, the, the ref blew the whistle the other way. They took it. They fast broke. Dave Petromala, an experienced player, went down there. And uh, again, Mark Gold puts in the goal to give him the 2-1 lead. Mark Gold has one goal and one assist so far. He's been a factor in both scores for Pittsburgh. Two to one. Pittsburgh in the lead. Well, they have been the full game. Four minutes left, first period action. I'm Lee Bell's along with Bill Barroza. Must be the situation from the Nassau Coliseum in a prime Monday, major indoor lacrosse league game of the week. Ball's out that dangerous cylinder. Here comes Wilson again. He gets control of the ball. He's tough to dislodge the ball from his stick. He's got tremendous skills. Gets it in close. And Volk had the shot. Well, so far, they're counting on Volk to do the scoring for him. He's, he's got one goal, Mark Gold the other. Uh, as, you, as I didn't say earlier, but Eric Volk's dad played for the Baltimore Colts uh, a couple decades back. If you're a football fan, you remember him. Tremendous safety, Rick Volk. Birdie. 
contact as the black and gold Pittsburgh Bulls get physical. They were known for as maybe the most physical team throughout their years in the MILL. Here is Marino right out in front, and Bill, that's his shot. The cannon shot from out front with the right hand. I've seen him do it often, but again, you're not going to do that shooting it high on Salikasi. He's got so much padding on Leap, they're going to have to pick their spots where they shoot a little bit better than that. Acasio looks like a sumo wrestler when he's in the goal. Here's the shot right between the legs of Bilger. Kyle ties the game at two. was stepping to his right if Kevin had just stayed stationary planted he probably would have made that save but he tried to move now and that opened up his legs see how high Bilger was standing there again that's a he comes from the field background as does Sal Acasio. these players are used to saving high the Canadian box used to playing low big adjustment for players like Bilger and Lacasio when they come into the major indoor lacrosse league so it looks like Pittsburgh is going to rotate between Klausner and Mark Gold facing off. Klausner playing the 16th man for the Pittsburgh Bulls on this roster. He too coming off an injury in the offseason. So well out of the goal. Almost checked out the stick. It was by Horms. Well, Sal is one of the best goalies out of the goal. He's got great stick work. He's not fast, but he's got a lot of confidence and control out of the goal. He's 5'11", what do you think, about 190? Sal? Yeah. Oh, no. 210? 210? Okay. About 210, but he's nothing like that sumo wrestler posture. He looks like in those pads. A lot more spelt than those pads show him to be. As is Kevin Dodger in the other goal. Skinny as a stick, Kevin Dodger is, if you can believe that. Yeah, it's true. But uh, Sal, they have listed at 215, but I was kidding him before the game, and I said, Sal, you've been losing weight, and... Uh, you know, I think you lose about 70 pounds during the game. So practice is getting tough. Bob Engelke, coach of the New York Saints. Well, he's been the coach since the inception of the Saints when they started out in the Meadowlands in New Jersey uh, back just five years ago. Two minutes to go. I think that's one of the success ingredients of this New York team is the fact that they have that consistency in coaching. All the way at the board. trailing player but you know you have to give the credit to Lee you got to credit Sal Acasio he made the original outlet pass when Donnie Borges came down Matt Crowley got it off the first shot and a, a nice follow-up a feed from uh, John Heil I believe it was on the left side well Borges had a tremendous fake and Kevin Bilger made a great save but the trailing player Crowley gets the rebound they're all even as far as rebounds are concerned and the first lead of the game for New York we'll be back with our continuation of the first quarter New York with their first lead of the game well, after Crowley scored, it was Dave Petromala, the leader for Pittsburgh Bulls, coming back off an injury that gets a feed from Butch Marino to tie the game at three again. Well, we talked about before the game that we were looking for him for defense, but here's a guy that's got a high scoring percentage, and he does it again. He doesn't waste very many shots, and there's his score late in the first quarter. As we resume action, the score remains 3-3 three to three in the second quarter. Lee Felsmo, Bill Barroso with our Prime Network Game of the Week coverage of the Major Indoor Lacrosse League. 3-3, well, three three, fairly low scoring, Bill, and not a lot of shots. That's what Pittsburgh wants. They want to keep the shot level down low. And that's what's surprising, is New York takes 80, 90 shots a game, and they're not on that pace right now, Lee. They average 94 per game against 71 for the Pittsburgh Bulls. A screen from way out front. Gordon Purdy from Australia. Rackets one in the corner. 4-3. Gordon Purdy, 5'7", 175, has a cannon from the outside. And again, maybe we'll get to see if it's a screen or not, but Kevin Bilger just got up and said, I don't know what happened there. And maybe it came around the Pittsburgh. That's what happened is it came around the Pittsburgh player. And typically a goalie is not expecting a shot from that far out. New York has been more successful than you would imagine shooting from the outside all season long. We've talked about the volume of shots they take from the outside. And 
and that was trademark New York Saints. Here's Johnny Borg, just loves the right hand, up the dive across the front. There he goes. Kyle tries to get the loose ball. Good physical defense by Pittsburgh. I think the best man-to-man -man defense I've seen him play this year. We expected a tough physical game, and because Pittsburgh believes they have a chance for the playoffs if they win the rest of their games, and Detroit has to lose. But Pittsburgh believes they still have a chance, and that's what will keep them in this emotionally. So the ball now goes back to New York. The Saints lead 4-3 to three off a shot by Gordon Purdy. This is Kyle going man-to-man -man in the middle. This is the feed, but Bob Cummings picks it up, and now he's got some open field into the cylinder. He had the whole goal in front of him, just missed it. Well, New York's not shooting well tonight. They're starting to shoot, but again, they've got to, they've got to pick their shots a little bit better. And just when you thought they were safe, goal by Sombrato. Steve Sombrato, one of the good-looking rookies for New York, puts in a shot right around the crease, and two-goal lead now for the first time for the New York Saints. Well, Coach Engelke uh, was sitting Steven Sombrato at the beginning of the season and, and felt that he had a lot of potential. You see him real alert here, picks it up, and again, Kevin Bilger should have been in the goal, covering that goal up. Mark Goal right there to play defense, too, and he just fell asleep on it. Hey, rebounds will kill you. you got to watch out for him. And so far, Ronnie Clausner, well, doing a nice job on the faceoffs. He had won that cleanly and then, and then gave it up. They were going to use a number of players, but with the success of Klausner, they're leaving him in there. Rat check over the head. Harms picks it up, and Sombrato gets it back from behind. Look at that defense by Sombrato. McEntee looking for help. Big look away feed. Tremendous feed. Had everybody faked out. Got it down low to Kraus. And a breakaway, Stevenson. Stevenson takes the left-hand shot on the breakaway. Out of bounds. It'll go back to the Pittsburgh goal. But that was an incredible touch pass from Klausden over to Stevenson. It was incredible how he just touched that thing for half a second, a quarter of a second, and got it passed off for that fast break goal, or for the shot, actually. New York has it now. Ball bouncing around. Pittsburgh looking faster than maybe they have this year. They've shuffled some players around and seem to be very comfortable with the lineup they have. Look at that. Martino throws it right out of, out of his stick and into the glass. I think he thought a player was going to come out of the box and he didn't get that player. New York works it around. Ball bounces off of Martino's feet. And with the ball out of bounds, we'll take a short break. The score five to three. The Saints lead by two. Two-goal lead for the New York Saints. You see the time, 11.26 left in the second quarter. Our Prime Network Game of the Week on the Major Indoor Lacrosse League. And the Pittsburgh Bulls in black and gold. This is Mike Smith looking inside, trying to hit Manley. And this is Butch Marino picking it up. Marino in tight. This is not his most comfortable area. He likes the cannon shot from out front. Manley trying to get the ball from three different New York Saints. Saints pulled up to high. They don't waste any time, though, getting that ball up here. Well, Pittsburgh came out real, real strong in the, in the first quarter. And they seem to lull into, into a, sl a sol slow sleep here. And I'm waiting for them, the spark, to ignite again. And when you see them get into one of those funky periods, it's always, to me, a lack of shots. They don't seem to get the shots when they get in those little sleep periods that they have throughout the year. And what happens is they count on their goaltender, Kevin Bilger. They count on defense to keep them in the game, but they've got to keep scoring if they want to be in this game by the end. Shot count violation. Ball goes to Dave Petromala very quickly. He tries to get it out to Warstel, but it was... Knocked down by New York. This is Ronnie Klausner. Klausner's from Wanta, New York. He's a local uh, local player. He was looking for like 38 tickets, I think, for family and friends for this <laughs> game. He was asking me. I know that. Mike Smith gets the ball. The line change comes in now. Volk, some young legs out there. Mark Gold cuts into the center looking for help. They can't get it to go. Smith can't pick it up. And Lacasio easily gets it. Looks immediately for the outlet. There's the example again. They're not shooting the ball on goal, and they've got to do that if they want to be in this game. Five to three. New York leads with ten minutes left in the second period. Into the cylinder. Beautiful feed. Nicholas was there to take it in, but wide of the net. And one of the reasons New York is, is scoring well, or when they do score, is they shoot in close most of the time. 
they look to feed the crease. They look from behind, they look from the side, but their offense has a lot of cutting, constant movement. The team seems to be pretty non-discriminant. seems to me they shoot from everywhere. Don't they, Bill? New York, 94 shots per game. That's a ton of shots. I think Bob Engelke would like to see him be a little more selective with their shot selection overall. When you talk about New York's success, and they do have a chance to win that American division, you have to look at these rookies. They've done a great job for them. They probably have the most productive group of rookies in the league so far. They do, with Andy Krause, uh, Andy Krause, an All-American from University of Virginia, and even Steven Sobrato doing real well for him this year. Seth Tierney is another one we'll probably hear from tonight. This is Colbeck, a rookie for Pittsburgh. Gets out front, Stevenson from Towson State with a bounce shot. 11 seconds left on the shot clock. They still have the ball, but they've got to hit the net to reset it. Six seconds. Martino's got to get it off. And they don't. He is hit from the side by Cummings. And they don't get the shot on the goal. Consequently, lose the ball. I have to believe that Coach Way, taking a look at him right there, is going to talk to his players about getting those shots. You can't afford not to take at least one in 30 seconds. And for New York, it's now forward to let here to his feet. Wants to get in a run and gun game with New York. They've got just too much speed all the way through their roster. So Pittsburgh looking to slow it down, but at the same time, they have to get their shots you're talking about. And here, here's New York working the ball from behind the goal. Again, not something that most teams do, but New York does it well. Ronnie Claus will fix it up. He's defensed by two players. Now that leaves a two and one on the other end. Butch Marino comes to the left hand. He looks for Johnny Wilson. Johnny Wilson can't pick it up. Petromala does, and he is nailed from behind. Dave Petromala, who had arthroscopic surgery, and is just coming back from three weeks off. They just removed some bone spurs uh, from his ankle, but he feels healthy, and, and, he, and he looks good out there tonight. So now Pittsburgh will reset. They've got 20 seconds on the shot clock. And the whistle blows on the time. They'll have something to sort out here, a possible penalty. We'll sort out for you when we come back in just a moment. The Cross League is happy to offer a chance to win a trip to the 1992 Mill World Championship game. Your prize package will include two round trip tickets, courtesy of U.S. Air, ground transportation, hotel accommodations, and two tickets to this prestigious event. The game will be held in early April at a site to be determined. To enter, please send a postcard with your name, address, and phone number to M-I-L-L -L Flyway, 9200 Ward Parkway, Suite 500, Kansas City, Missouri, 64114. All entries have to be in by March 27th. Okay, back to live action, and Bill Barroza looks like we had a little bit of action as we were away with 7.40 left in the second quarter. The Bulls pull back to within one. And uh, I'll tell you, it was, a, it was a nice shot, nice play. I think we we're, we're going to have a little bit of a timeout here. A man down goal because New York was up by one. There was a penalty for too many men on the field by Pittsburgh. Petromala got the ball back. We talked about the strength of their man down play. With a man down, a man advantage to the New York team, Petromala scores to bring the team back to within one. Well, don't count on me to, to make the good call because I said Dave Petromala was going to be counted on for defense tonight, and so far he's got two goals. But again, a key point is, is they scored that goal with the man down, and New York's going to have to play better on their man-up power play if they're going to win this game tonight. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll put a goal on man down into the category of great defense, which, great. Ma which makes you look pretty good. Here's uh, Dennis Way, Mark Pierce on the sideline with his team. Three-year record, 7-15. He's had a lot of frustrations with this team, trying to find the right mix. This year, they brought a whole new style of play. And with some injuries to key people like Wilson, they just haven't found the mark. Sal Acasio, on the other hand, every year getting a little bit better. Better and better. And, and the thing, uh, Coach Wade lost one of his best uh, players last year, or actually this year, this season, uh, Brian Nicola, who went to the Detroit Turbos. 7.40 left in the second quarter. Now Pittsburgh back to within one. New York gets the face off. McEntee likes to work behind. All the way across the field and taking his eyes off was Donnie Borges. Borges looking for the shot. Didn't quite get the ball. Cummings now can't get a fast break if they can corral the ball. Breaking down field. Pittsburgh breakaway. Looking for help from a trailing player. Nobody there to help him. Clausen looks to the sideline. Pierce holding the player, Wilson, from getting on the field too early. But now they settle down, get their offense moving with 15 on the shot clock. 
And they're trying to change up the entire line here because I think the, the guys that were out on the floor got a little bit tired, so they were trying to make the substitutions. Well, it didn't work. They're all totally unsettled. Seven seconds, four seconds on the shot clock, and it doesn't matter because they give the ball up anyway. We've got a break going the other way with Donnie Borges. Marino trying to play defense. Borges couldn't pick up the feed by McEntee. Put it right at his feet. Very difficult to handle that. Now Marino's got a fast break if he can pick it up. Horms to his back. Horms is there. Marino takes one fake, gives it to Horms, and Horms puts it home. Tie ball game. There's, there's the talent of, of an athlete. Butch Marino did a nice job at holding on to that ball long enough not to get it taken away and to find that open man. But he created that situation. Butch Marino, three years ago, would never have fed this ball to the other player. He would have shot all the way. He has matured so much. Watch him get the attention of two players. And what he does is he draws that second player, and again, Horms picks out a nice corner on Sal Ocasio. And we're watching the replay again here. Butch Marino throws a couple of fakes. He draws Cummings over because he thinks he's going to have a chance to hit him. And again, one-on-one -on -one against Sal Ocasio. So the second quarter opened up, game was tied at three. Two goals by New York. Purdy and Sombrato made it a two-goal lead for New York before Petromal and Horms tied it at five. And Petro still has a man in the penalty box. And Pittsburgh possession. Worstel serving that penalty for too many men on the field. Well, I know Coach Engelke well, and at halftime, I'm sure he's going to talk to his players about that. That's to give up two goals while you're a man up is, is uh, in the same in the same period of time is not acceptable as far as he's concerned. Well, that's a killer thing because when you're a man up, you've got to win that statistical edge in the game. In other words, you're a man up against their man up. You've got to make that an advantage to your team. And giving up a goal is double double sin in that situation. Not Ignato now leading the team with 10 goals coming into this game. Marino rap checks, get the ball back. Here we go. Team went a full gallop. This is Willard, Bill Willard from Maryland coming in looking for the trailing player. Gets him there. We're still between the legs, no goal. Two All-American players from the University of Maryland trying to connect. That was a great save by Sal Ocasio, but New York, again, is not playing smart defensively. They're getting a lot of shots right in the face of Sal Ocasio. And Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh is right on their game plan. They said that they needed to keep New York to under 15 goals, and they said they needed to take more shots, and that's what they're doing both of those tonight. First pace of the game in the favor of Dennis Wade, his charges. That shot by Worstel way out front. Now, this is the third sprint for this Pittsburgh unit. I think New York got some fresh legs on there. Let's see if this team is tired. Pittsburgh, Ed Stevenson there playing defense. Marino, 66 up front. This is Petromala. These guys can run all day. You got Petromala leading it. Petromala tries to break out. Let's it go back to Lacasio. 30 left, second quarter. Game tied at five. Hard shot from the outside. Does not even hit the goal. Here comes Petromala. He's giving it all he can. He's got a player on the far side. It's Stevenson on the far side. Gives it to him finally. And no by the time he took the shot. Well, that was a great save by Sal Ocasio, but I'll tell you, Dave Petromala's giving it all he, he's got. Again, a guy from Long Island, he wants to show his fans he's, you know, he's here to play. Bill, I think he held it a little too long. There's no angle left. He, he lost his angle, but you know what? You know what uh, Stevenson could have done is he could have fed Dave back and he would have had an open goal. They'll see that on the tape. Here we go, the fast break again. Two players. Let's see if Martino can do it. Two fakes and a jam. Putting up the brick wall. Now he's got a three on two lead going back the other way. Let's see what New York can do. Fast break by Borges. Borges circles for the right hand. This is the goal. 3.30 left. Game tied at five. And a succession of fast breaks. Fail to get a goal. McEntee. So dangerous as a feeder. Well, you, keep, you keep talking about Donnie Borges. I'm waiting for him to go to his left hand. Here he is again. He's looking. Shot clock expires. The ball go back to Pittsburgh. We'll be back with the final moments of the second quarter. And we see a fast break. This is two on none. Sal Acasio, Bob Martino's got Butch Marino on his left side. He said, I'm going to do it all myself. Goes in on Acasio, and Sal makes an excellent save between the legs. Straight up at that point, Martino had already committed himself to go between the legs. There's the score, 2.46 left, tied at five. They couldn't have had a better situation, Bill. Martino is one of their leading scorers coming on one-on-one, -on -one, just like a penalty shot. And I tell you, you, as a player lead, you've got two options. You come down, 
you pick a spot, you shoot for it, and you pick that corner. Or what he could have done is faded to one side of the goal and drawn the goalie and then had an open spot for Butch Marino, one of the best shooters in the league. Now Pittsburgh still, Marino gets the ball back. Willard lost his glove. Shot clock violation. Again, the ball goes back to New York. How many times now has, Phil, or has Pittsburgh taken themselves out of an offensive push? But if you would ask me before the game what the score would be at halftime, I wouldn't guess 5-5, and it's heading into halftime with, with a tie score. Cummings comes around, takes a shot, and scores on Kevin Bellinger. No defensive player took him out of the cylinder. Cummings came in without anybody checking him and got a shot right in the face of Bilger, 6-5, New York. And again, that's what makes New York effective. New York shoots from in close, and here's an example of it. Again, he got a nice hit after the goal, and I think uh, he probably just shook that one off. He saw the light go on and said, I don't care about my face. The hit came a little bit too late. The slide you see there did not come from the top. He was in the cylinder. Bilger, nothing he could really do, 6-5. New York back in front with two minutes left in the second period. Well, there's the guy we talked about earlier, Andy Krause, one of the rookies for uh, New York, and he's an All-American from UVA, but a great face-off man, and he won that one right there. Krause has been a big, big part of this New York team's chances of success in the American division. Volk now with the ball. And rookie Volk gives it back to Johnny Wilson. Wilson's a guy that I really think, you know, you look at this roster, he's got to come up with some goals. He's had a tough year injury-wise. We've talked about that. But he's got to shake it loose and get some shots on goal. Fast break. Two on one. Krause has Nicholas to his right. Nicholas from Virginia also can't pick it up. Krause followed Nicholas at Virginia, and they had a chance to connect there on a fast break. Mike Smith. Mike Smith. Into the cylinder. Three players take a check at him. He had to pass. Finally does. Volk gets it. Stevenson. Goes wide. Stevenson beats one player. Comes in looking for help in the cylinder. And finally wrapped up by the defense of New York. No players in there, Bill, to give him any help offensively. Uh, New York is starting to play better defense. I think, I think they finally woke it up. And New York has just tightened up their defense. Again, we're under a minute to go before halftime. Scary moment there for Kevin Bilger as that ball was... The outlet pass came dangerously close to going in. Now Colbeck comes in, the rookie from Loyola. And right between the legs, Sal Acasio makes another save. Tough to beat him down there. Ball goes back to New York. 36 seconds left. One goal lead for New York. To the way from Blue. Well, Sal's playing another steady game. And again, not playing one of his exceptional games, but playing a steady game to keep New York in this. Dodger looks great. Stands up for the outlet pass. Holding call on Colbeck. And unfortunately, with 23 seconds left, the rookie Colbeck will go to the box. That well, gives New York a power play. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens second half, but I would imagine that uh, Coach Way will keep going with Kevin Bilger. He's been playing well for them, and again, I think he's a reason that the game is as close as it is. Colbeck in the box. You just saw him. Here's Dennis Way a little bit exasperated with that call. Here you got 23 seconds left. The game is in a virtual tie. It's 6-5. to five. You're within one. Now you give them an advantage and a high percentage shot to be sure. Bob Engelke takes one of his timeouts now to set up a good shot. He knows this has to be an excellent shot. Well, when we saw him play Philadelphia down in the Spectrum a couple weeks back, he had about 30 seconds left in the game and called one of the best plays I've ever seen. I guessed it wrong, and, and again, uh, one of the Cummings drove to the goal instead of going behind the goal, took it back out in front. So we'll see what they do here. Bob Engelke, one of the great coaches in this league, but also uh, from a great playing family. Bob Engelke was an excellent player along with his, his whole family. Norm? We'll have a chance to talk to him at halftime, and we'll find out uh, a little bit more about his plans for the second half. So here we go. Power play with 23 seconds left in the first half. One goal lead for the Saints. They have the ball in the blue and white. And that big, tough defense, that all-American lineup in there playing man-down defense for the black and gold Pittsburgh Bulls. Oh, bad pass trying to get it across. One, don't forget, Petromano scored last time. Now they've got three on one. Shot in close, and Bilger makes the big save. Six seconds. Five, 
four, counting down. Shot from the far pipe goes wide. Petromala finally gets it. Not enough time as he races upfield, but a great defensive play by that man down defense. The first half comes to an end. The score remains six to five on the goal by Bob Cummings. It's anybody's game, though, as we move toward the second half. A lot of excitement here, and I'll tell you one thing. New York's advantage is the young, fresh legs. They've got a lot of speed, and the second half, they always take off. We'll be back with the Coors Light halftime report in just a moment. Six to five, New York on top. Welcome back to the Nassau Coliseum. There's your score, six to five in favor of New York. And we're at our Coors Light halftime report right now. Lee Felsmo along with Bill Barroza. And the game, I think, pretty much so far has been a game set to the tempo that Dennis Way would like, though. Yeah, Dennis talked to me before the game and said that he wanted to keep it low scoring. He wanted to get better defense out of his team. And he's doing that tonight. Well, let's find out from the other team if that is correct. Let's go down and talk to Bob Engelke, the coach of the New York Saints. He has the one goal lead. But, Bob, let me ask you, do you feel like the tempo is not the tempo you would like? Do you feel like Dennis Way has slowed it down to where you're not taking as many shots as you would like? Well, we, I think that what really hurt us is when we had that extra man and they scored two goals. But as far as the tempo, we're pushing the ball on offense, I think. And I, I think sometimes we're not um, going out hard enough on them in defense. We're letting them hold on to the ball too long. But as far as the tempo, I think we're okay. We're getting some good shots. That extra man, like I said, hurt. But uh, hopefully the second half will change things. Well, what about that specifically? Bill was talking about how that really could have hurt you. Obviously, it's first and foremost on your mind. What did you see there that you're going to have to change in that man up situation? Well, in the second, uh, second time we had the man up here with the last 30 seconds, I had the second man up in there. On that first man up, Mike Cummings made a nice cut, and Timmy McEntee made a nice feed, and the ball went off the tip of his stick. The goalie was turned. If he catches it and puts it in the goal, it's a different story. It goes the tip of his stick, and the go ball goes the other way. And Petramala, you know, a great player, made a great shot. All right, well, I'm sure you have a lot to talk about. Bob, join your team. It's a great game so far. We wish you luck in the second half. Bob Engelke, coach of the New York Saints. We'll be back with more of our Coors Light halftime in just a moment. Here we are, facing off for the third quarter. Lee Felsmo, Bill Barroza. This is the opening faceoff of the third quarter, and the first change that we see, Bill, is a change in the goal for Pittsburgh. Well, it really surprises me because I thought Kevin Bilger did a very nice job for Pittsburgh, but he could have been tired, or Coach Wade may, maybe thought he wasn't playing as well as he should have. And Heil just did Hayes a big favor. He took a shot from the outside, hit him right in the stomach, and if you're a goalie, that's exactly what you want. It gets you into the game, you feel comfortable, you have your confidence now, and again, it should have been a one-on-one -on -one close in. So early now in the third quarter, Pittsburgh gets the ball back. Well, here's Mr. Everything with the ball. Dave Petromala, all-world, two goals tonight. And a shot by Mark Gold on the feed from Petromala. Puts in the goal to tie the game. Now, Petromala has been involved in every come-from-behind goal for the Pittsburgh squad. Well, we see Dave on the outside, and he feeds... He feeds Mark Goal on a cut. And what worked early on for Pittsburgh was when they started moving their offense. And again, that's what they planned on doing coming into tonight's game, is cutting on New York. And they found New York's weakness. They can't stay with the cutter. They're, they're just playing lackadaisical defense. So that was a man down goal, too, I might add. Man down goal. So that's, again, that same Achilles heel has been killing them all game. Third one today. And that's exactly what Coach Angle, he talked about at halftime, was the fact that they got it. They have to play better defense, and that's the third goal scored against them when they had an extra man on the floor. Now they still have an extra man. Colbeck is still in the penalty box. Here comes Butch Marino. What happens as a player out there, Leaf, is a lot of times you think you've got that extra guy, so somebody else is going to pick him up, and they never do. They give you a little bit more green than you normally might have. People tend to bird dog back and try to get that easy outlet pass. New York looks a little flat-footed as they start the third quarter. The game tied in the first minute by Pittsburgh, 6-6 six to six now. 
One thing I, I like about the New York team is, and here we're looking at Colbeck in the penalty box, three shorthanded goals, as we said earlier. Again, maybe they should play with a man in the box all night. Detroit's a team that has killed everybody in the league with that shorthanded offense. But the defensive forces that Pittsburgh puts on the field really have been hurting New York. All tied. Hayes now looking very strong. Klausner and Marino. It'll be Klausner going one on one. Makes the fake. Sticks it. But a save by Lucasio. I think Ronnie Klausner held on to that ball too long. He just he cut off his own angle by holding on to it. Ryan Klausner, an All-American in the defensive position, hasn't played too much. Here's Butchie Marino, who had had a chance for the fast break a minute ago. And Klausner was actually looking on his fast break to give it up to Marino, but Marino was trailing him, and they didn't have a one-on-one. Two-one-on-one snuffed by Lacasio. Gorgeous now. Well, I'm waiting for him to go to his left hand, Leaf. I don't know when I, when, yeah. did, when did he say he was going to do that. He, he, he'll watch this tape. He promised me. But I, didn't, I didn't really believe him when he said it. Here comes Purdy now from Australia. Bounces off his own player. Nicholas took it in the back. Now trying to feed it to the crease. Purdy again. Shot clock has reset. Now. Gordon Purdy is one of the most talented players on the Saints team. What a takeaway by Purdy. A tremendous save by Hayes. He had no regard for the official in his way. He wanted to get that ball, and if you saw him, he almost knocked the official over. Well, Hayes has gotten his indoctrination in this game. A lot of shots right in his face. Here comes a fast break to the other side. Ed Stevenson from Towson State. Defense is back, but Mark Gold's up front. He tries to find Gold. Can't. Sweeps in front in the cylinder, and the shot blocked. Shot clock resets on that shot, though, because the goalie came out and turned it away. Now they went from 30 to 9. No, they, they didn't give him the reset. Here's the takeaway that went by Purdy. And it makes a nice uh, shot, and Hayes on a nice save. And again, it starts to break the other way. And, and you see him go over the head. I talked about a talented player. And again, gives himself another chance to make a shot and possibly a goal. And how about the save by Hayes? Hayes with that indoctrination with the outside shot. Really looks comfortable and makes some tremendous saves there. 11.25 left. Game still tied at six. Here's Patignano. Ball bounces off of Martino. So two of the big offensive stars going one-on-one -on -one out there. Martino from Washington College. Well, not, not to say that uh, New York can't score from the outside because they've got some powerful shot shooters from that range. They've got to break inside, and that's where they've got to score. And so far, Dennis Way looks like he made the right choice. Hayes looks fresh. He looks very strong in the goal, and he's going to give him two strong quarters, if this is any indication. Fresh line comes on now. 14 seconds left. Petromala setting up a one-on-one -on -one against Kyle. Petromala looking to the cylinder for a feed. Down to seven seconds on the shot clock. In close, Manley shoots between the legs, but a save at the last moment. I'll tell you, we put Pittsburgh's playing tonight, Lee. We talked about their one and three record, but they're a much better team than that. And they're playing that. They're playing as a, a, a you know a 500 team tonight. They're playing a lot better. Major Inter Lacrosse League is a very competitive league, except for maybe Detroit. They really have an advantage with the Gate Brothers. Other than that, any given night. Coming to the higher right hand shot, and Hayes again. Here comes Petromala. He's got Klausner to his left. He'll look at Klausner. He'll either feed him or shoot. Can't get the shot off behind the trailing player. Tremendous play by Petro. Well, that was great defense by John Heil. I mean, he, he rode Dave off of that play and gave him no angle to shoot at. Now it's Cummings on the other end. Cummings makes a great fake behind the back. Saved by Hayes. Look at that defense by Harms. You saw Johnny Heil. Tremendous defense by Harms. And the save by Hayes. What a defense by the team from Pittsburgh. Well, you watch him come down on this break, and a great play by Cummings. Again, hits the goalie in the face. Heil has all the time in the world to pick up this, this rebound. And you watch this. He picks it up, and again, no goal. Beautiful save by Heil, or by Hayes. Hayes making the big saves, and Horm saving the shot. Back to live action inside. Sobrano makes the save, and too many shots. Right in the face of Hayes, the defense has really let down a little bit on those close cylinder shots. Seven to six, New York regains the lead. That's Steven Sobrano's second goal of the evening. In the last game, he had a couple of goals. You watch him playing in close here. Again, a nice face dodge. He gets the goalie to stand up. And again, the goalie should be covering that goal in tight. When you stand up, that's when you give up the angle. Puts in a nice shot for the lead, seven six. 
Krausman is named on the draw, controlled by Pittsburgh. Rookie Kraus goes into the faceoff and nailed from behind. It was Matt Crowley to get the ball back to Pittsburgh. We're 9-20 left from the end of the third quarter. 7-6 New York leads. So in the strength of Steve Sombrato's goal, second goal of the game, 7-6, the one-goal lead for New York. Pittsburgh has the ball. A lot of tremendous saves by the new goalie, Hayes, but Bill, they're giving him too many shots, giving New York too many shots in close. There's a shot from the outside by Horms right over the corner. And Lacasio guessed low, Bill. He went down to his knees a little bit, left that opening. Well, this is Tim Horms' second year in the league, and he's gotten better from last year to this year. And again, Sal Lacasio goes down to his knees, and where he's strong is up, up high, where he's got all that extra padding. And Sal, I don't know why he went down, but again, maybe he thought he was going for a bounce shot and he'd beat it, he'd beat the bounce. The shot is an overhead shot, looks like it's going down. That's what it looked like, but it stayed high, and again, Sal would have had that easy save if he had stayed up, standing up straight. Oh, Sal misreads it. The game now tied at seven. Pittsburgh staying it all the way. Klausner, or Klausner, rather, is wide open in the cylinder. They can get it to him. Finally, he's trying to screen off his player. Stevenson can't pick it up. A little fun, uh, funny bounce and there. But I tell you, with New York, New York can be dangerous if they get a lead. And they, they seem to, they seem to like go in streaks. But tonight, it's not happening. John Rees had a chance to take the lead for New York again. He misses the whole goal. So seven to seven with 7.40 to four left. Here goes Purdy. He had a tremendous first half. He's an athlete for sure against Horms. Trying to set up the one-on-one -on -one with seven seconds left on the shot clock. Now, no time on the shot clock. And they give the ball up. Pittsburgh trying to move the tempo. Look at that. Stevenson wasn't even looking. He's got clods in the head of him. He can find him. They've got a break on the other end now. Could be a one-on-one -on -one with Sal. Martino gets it back from Clodsden. You know what you keep seeing, Leaf, is, and I don't know why it's happening, and maybe Sal's getting tired, but he continues to go down to his knees every time Pittsburgh comes and shoots. We talked about the water loss as playing goal. Look at the shots in close. The defense for Pittsburgh is knocking the Saints all over the field. Here's a fast break if they have enough legs left. Put Marino. He's got a trailing player behind him. Can he find Manley? There he is. Manley takes a shot. It's a big save by Lacasio. There he was, Bill, coming up strong, filling the goal like he normally does. And what's going on right now is New York is breaking the other way with those young legs. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh's players have been out there for about three runs up and down the field, and they've got to make a player change. 6.44 left, third quarter, game tied at seven. Each team playing for their life in the major indoor lacrosse league. If they want playoff hopes this year, they've got to win tonight. Push ball, all given back to Pittsburgh. So now the clock down to 6.30, crowd booing here. Klaus gets up. These players are very tired. There's Bob Engelke. His team has been hurt by, if you want to pick one thing, three goals on a man down with seven goals total scored against you. That has been really the big difference in the game for him tonight. And that unit with Petromano leading it is in the game right now. Which Marino triggers from up front. Wilson looking in close. Wilson gets the ball, and he can't find the net. That's the story of his offense this year. He just can't put it away. Well, New York's got a 4-2 the other way if they can take advantage of it, Leaf. And Scott Hunt with the ball. Tim McAtee had the entire right side of Hayes open there. Well, McAtee misses the goal. Hitting, getting a little bit ferocious on the far side. That was Huff trying to make a connection. Heil brings it back in, sees Borges on his left. Heil just tries to shoot it to beat the shot clock. Oh, and picked off by Borges almost, but not quite. Johnny Wilson. Wilson tries to find Mark Gold. Cannot connect with him, so now here comes New York. Up to Borges. And he's, here's our Mr. Righty. He's going to come back. You know it. Here we go. Borges looking for help. Gets it in the first. And a big save by Hayes. That was an excellent feed by Donnie Borges. Marino, wide open. He can't collect it. He knew he was going to get hit. Petromala found Marino, but Marino took his eyes off it because the hit was on the way. Five minutes left, third quarter. Game tied at seven. And let's take a look at these shots. Well, the pace, this pace has picked up. And again, shots on goal. 
right here you can see the shooting percentage 67 percent on goal for pittsburgh so that's a high shooting percentage because johnny wilson historically one of the best finishers in the game he's having trouble this year and again takes a shot wide of the mark one thing I notice out here is Dennis Way is running his lines a little bit too long. And again, that'll advantage New York over the long hole. That's Tierney takes a shot. Hayes picks it up, can't find it, and finally gets it. We'll take a short break. 4-25 left. Game all tied at 7. Gordon Purdy showing his speed as he comes in. Hayes turns him away. Ed Stevenson with two defenders in front of him. He won't have anywhere to go. Huff coming over to double team with Sombrato. Two trailing players. One up is Holmes. Holmes gives a rocket shot that just can't find the white twine. They are continuing these shots that just missed the net. Well, both of these teams have picked up the, the pace by a couple steps here. And I tell you, it's back and forth, back and forth. And the team that's in better shape by the fourth quarter, it's going to make a difference here, Leaf. 3.26 left, third quarter, another shot there redirected. Shot clock will expire. They did not hit the net. Shot clock will only reset if you hit the four by four and a half foot net. The goal area can be a save, but it has to hit the goal. Kraus now. Purdy what? runs off. They're trying to change a man here. So Kraus is at a disadvantage, but he takes a shot anyway. We've got the shot clock getting down to about 10 seconds now, and they've got to get one on goal. One thing that Pittsburgh is doing is they're not coming out over playing New York. They're staying back in a tight zone. Great save by Hayes. He has looked sensational in the second half. Bildred did a great job in the first half. Pittsburgh, this could be a turnkey game for them. Petromala back on the roster after an injury. Takes that shot, wraps it around his defensive player, Kraus. And again, just wide. Well, the surprising thing is Pittsburgh had a three-on-one break, and Colbeck headed to the box. He must have been really tired. Colbeck not expected to play tonight. Injury to Ernst put him on this roster. Maybe he just wasn't in game shape. Now Clouser looks to find Manley. Manley, the veteran, takes a shot wide of the net again. And you can see the graph we showed earlier, the lowest percentage of on-goal shooting, and Pittsburgh is holding that number tonight. Trailing the play, gets the feed from Borges, and now New York goes up by one, eight to seven. It was a thing that Pittsburgh wanted to avoid. They did a good job all night, but they got a man out of the box early. You see Jerry Bird start the break over to Donnie Borges. It's real difficult for Donnie to shoot from the right side. Does the right thing, feeds Jerry Bird back, picks a corner, and again, Jerry Bird's a defensive specialist, makes a nice play there. One more look at it. Fast break is what has really let this team have a success over the years. Well, Donnie Borges is not known, known for his assists. He likes to go to the goal, likes to shoot. Does one for the team the there, and it was a great play, a great assist. Score by number 19, Jerry Byrne. So Byrne, goal it's number eight from Berg Borges. Eight to seven to score with 210 left. And Hayes getting an equipment... Uh, adjustment on the sideline he's been sensational since he came in to start the second half and I'm I've been very impressed with his play it was a questionable call by Dennis Way a questionable only in the fact that Kevin Bilger looked sensational in the first half he did a good job the team is only down by one uh, but Dennis Way looks like he made the right decision here Sal Acasio looks like he's gonna go the whole route and of course as the fourth quarter comes up Bill you know what happens to these goalies with all that padding on there? They're losing pounds of water, pounds of fluid. Sal Acasio cannot be as, the same goalie he was in the first quarter as the fourth quarter gets near. And we'll take a good, we'll, we'll keep following him for the rest of the game, see how he's doing. But I tell you, New York's winning the faceoffs now. They're playing with a little bit more enthusiasm. And one in, in, important ingredient are the fans. Fans getting into it. Borges took that right-handed shot from the left-handed side of the cylinder. Still refusing to take that promised left-handed shot. That would have been a good chance for it. New York is being very deliberate on the plays. They're looking for the one-on-ones. There you go. Cummings comes in and beats Matt Wilson. Made it look pretty easy. Got no help defensively in the cylinder. Bill came in with the right hand, rolled back to the left hand. Nobody took him off his pins. Nobody knocked him down, and he took the shot. Well we, talk, well, we talked about how we wanted, how they were being very deliberate. And what's interesting is that's the same play that won the Philadelphia game a couple of weeks back. 
They, he rolled, went to the right side. There was no backup. He came back left, and again, the slide did not get there in time. I'm talking about Philadelphia, and I'm talking tonight. Same play. Well, this is the fourth time that New York has had a lead. All other times, the other three times, Dave Petromala, as we look at Bob Cummings, Dave Petromala has been involved in the goal that brought Pittsburgh back. Let's see if 43 Petromala can pull this team back into it again. But this, 14 left. But this is when New York can be dangerous. They got two goals, and I'll tell you, they could go on a roll now. Cummings. He is hot. He wants the ball. He was right in the cylinder. Both teams looking a little sluggish with the ball around the boards behind the goal. 55 seconds left. Hayes gives it off to Horms. They'll check the clock. They'd like to get one back here. They get it up pretty quickly. Phil Willard from Maryland over to Klausner. Petromala, that team is on there, so Petromala is going to hold true and bring his team back a little closer. He's on the field to help out. Marino. Rocket shot, and Lacasio picks it up beautifully. Well, there's the consistency we're talking about, and Sal Lacasio again, makes a very nice save there. Phil Willard wraps him with that defensive check. Hold was the call. And the ball will go back to New York with 24 seconds left in quarter number three. Two-goal lead for New York. Watch out. Here comes Purdy. Tremendous athlete. Willard tries to bounce him around out in the cylinder. Ball still picked up by New York. And here comes Reese. Pass break. Dave Petromala. Can he get by one player? Nope. Looks for help. New players come on. Petromala all the way up to Mark Gold. They check the shot clock. It's off because down to two seconds. Hurry up. One, zero. That'll do it for the third quarter. Mark Gold lost his direction for a moment. The third quarter was leaving. Time was winding down. Two goal lead for the Saints on the strength of a goal by Byrne, a goal by Cummings. And at nine to seven, they will lead going into quarter number four. We'll be back with more of our Prime Network Game of the Week. for Pittsburgh in the black and gold and Donnie Borges for New York in the blue and white. Get ready to start the fourth quarter. New York leads by two. At the end of the first quarter, it was tied 3-3. Three, three. At the end of the half, New York had the one goal lead. At the end of three quarters, they've got the two goal lead and the fresh legs. Bill, I think Bob Engelke, has got them where he likes them. Well, uh, if you're coaching, you'd, you'd like to have the lead going in the fourth quarter anytime, but there's always that complacency factor. You know, you say you've got the two goal, and you, you maybe you get a little bit of confidence. The coach never feels that way. The players sometimes do. One of the key factors will be the play of Sal Acasio. Can he go four quarters? He's worked pretty hard for three. If Pittsburgh can put some, put some good pressure on him, I think the fatigue factor will show if it's there. Smith comes in, takes a shot, gobbled up by Lacasio. And here come the Saints. And here comes the Saints the other direction. Well, the advantage New York has in any game in any fourth quarter is the fact that they've got the legs and they show it game in and game out. So Bob Cummings looks to Borges. Borges with that wrapped right thigh going against the defense of Pittsburgh's John Wilson. Takes a shot right into the chest of Hayes, but he gets this loose ball, almost picks it up, can't quite. There the wrap check, Volk picks it up. Well, Pittsburgh's got a break uh, leaf. He's got a three on two right here. Smith. Smith all the way across he's got help he's looking for the trailer player never once looked for the shot with Smith out in front and there's a rocket from Stevenson picked up beautifully by Wilson he'll roll inside and the check takes the stick right out great defense by Crowley Kyle Stevenson playing defense get back gets back in the hole score still nine to seven two goal lead for the Saints in blue and white well, here's the leader, Tim McEntee. We talked about him earlier, looking to be Mr. Feeder. There he goes again. Trying to find Crowley. Crowley saw Klausner coming over. Took his eye off for a moment. I would, too. Shot goes from the right pipe. Finds the mark. The first three-goal lead of the game. It's just a matter of time for Matt Crowley. He's such a great athlete, and he weaves himself between a couple players and makes that nice goal. Again, Again, he saved himself from getting crunched behind the goal. Klausner was lining him up for a hit. Again, he keeps coming and coming and coming. Again, 
uh, had plenty of time to make that shot. Klausner gave it all on that one check to the boards, and then he gave up. Crowley sensed he wasn't even there and comes around, right? And the team slide didn't come. It actually came, but it came late. And uh, that was Dave Petromala that, that hit him, but a little bit too late. So Klausner's lack of baby conditioning, he's just getting back to the roster himself. He had a tremendous uh, rehabilitation period because of an, in, uh, an ankle injury. New York getting this face off with regularity now. Takes a shot from outside. Good save. Hayes. Inside, Sombrato. Whoa! Slam dunk almost. That, that would have been his hat trick if he had put that if he had put that ball in the goal. 13 minutes left, plenty of time in the fourth quarter, but Pittsburgh has to get some shots now to get back into this thing. They're down by three. But the statistics were even at halftime. Ground ball, face-offs, most of all the stats. And New York is certainly dominating in the area of face-offs and loose balls. Well, the Achilles heel that we were sort of focusing on was shots. And the shots sort of seem to vanish here in the third period and more as we go to the fourth. Stevenson going against McEntee. Uh, Tim McEntee. And I, I, I'd say that Tim's got the better of the uh, of the position right there. He gets the takedown. Two points. I think Stevenson was the aggressor, but... Uh, not in a good position, particularly for a home team, uh, you know... For, for playing in New York. So Stevenson doesn't hesitate to trot over to the box. And I guess McIntyre will spend time in there as well. Both players go in for a penalty. Well, if, if Pittsburgh proves to, uh, to be as good with uh, a man down or, you know, one less player on the field like they were with the disadvantage before when New York was a man up, that could be to their advantage. Well, good point. You see a little bit of pushing and shoving, and Tim McEntee makes a... I, I think he was the aggressor in that case. I mean, he took a, a huge swing, and that stick went up into Stevenson's throat, probably. So I probably uh, could have side with uh, Ed Stevenson there. All right, now Marino bringing it in. They have a power... No, it's a 4-on-4. Four four. That's where they'll play it, 4-on-4 four four at this point. So they're even, but each team with one less player, which gives them a little bit more green. But you see Jerry Byrne out there, one, uh, an All-American defenseman, just just hounding, hounding the player. And again, here's Petromala getting hounded. So New York is not resting on their three-goal lead here. They're playing tough defense. Six, goal, or six seconds left on the shot clock. There's a whistle. We'll see if the push call gives the ball back to Pittsburgh. It'll be a penalty, actually. So I think uh, New York gets another guy in the box. Two guys in the box. One more, we're going to have a penalty shot. Fetcher Mala had a great chance there, Bill, to give the ball up. He was double teamed. There were two guys wrapped on him. If he gave the ball up, they would have had an open shot in the cylinder. I think you're right. The problem is he, 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 didn't, have a, he didn't have both of his hands on the stick very well, so he couldn't pass the ball. Fetcher Mala has been sensational tonight in his first game back and has really brought this team back every time they've been down. Can he do it again? That's the question here. Two players now in the penalty box for New York. They're down, or they're up by three, so Pittsburgh really has to stick one here. That's Wilson to Marino. He's got the cannon from up top. Martino gets it across the play of the goal to Manley, and they very easily, with three quick passes, get goal number eight. Well, what's interesting is when I spoke to Coach Engelke during the week, and I said, what are you worried about with the Pittsburgh team? And what he told me was their extra man play. He was worried because they have a lot of good talent there. And you see it right there. A nice nice ball movement. And Greg Manley, again, a six-year player, puts a, a goal in one-on-one. -on -one. Just good ball movement. And again, from Martino over to Manley. And that's what you want to do. You want to move the goalie in this sport. Very tough to play defense against that as we look at the bench for Pittsburgh. Now think about the eight goals scored by Pittsburgh. Four of them have been in uneven situations. They've scored three with a man down, and they've scored one with a man up. Technical infraction there gives the ball to New York on that faceoff. They're still playing at a man advantage. It's four for Pittsburgh, three for New York. So New York can put a little pressure on the ball. No, it's four on four after that goal. I'm sorry, there's a man behind the goal. So they're playing even up four on four. And they'll, they'll take their time. They'll try to work the shot clock down. But again, they've only got a couple seconds left. Ball kicked around. Watch out. Here they go. Petromala. It's a two-on-one right now. Clouds in. Clouds in. Fakes and finds the near corner. Tremendous play. And Petromala. 
Chamala finds Clodsden to bring them back to within one. Ten to nine the score. Well, Dave Petromala is, is leading this team in, 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 in a respect that he's got two goals, he's got two assists, and he's just playing all around good defense. He's creating a lot of things out here for his team. You see him come down with the ball. He fleet, feeds it over to Jeff Clodsden. And what's interesting is Clodsden an All-American defenseman, and so is Dave Betramala. But they're creating the offense for Pittsburgh Bulls tonight. Nice shot by Clodsden. Watch him freeze the goalie and then hit the near corner. I tell you, a lot of good, good uh, stick movement there. Again, he's from the upstate New York area, so he's played a lot of box lacrosse growing up. 11-21 left. Now a one-goal game. New York leads. They're in their home arena, the Nassau Coliseum. Leif Elsmo along with Bill DeRosa. This is our game of the week on Prime Network for the Major Indoor Lacrosse League. New York with that one-goal lead. They must win to have a good chance of winning the American division. Pittsburgh will be mathematically eliminated if they lose tonight. They are fighting for their lives. Sombrano gets a shot. Uncontested in the cylinder and beats Hayes. Two-goal lead again. Well, that's Rob Cognato. We talked about him at the top of the show. That's a guy that we're counting on scoring for him tonight. And I believe that's his second goal. A nice feed. Rob switches hands from righty to lefty. Again, he gets Hayes moving. And what you're finding is when the goalies aren't stationary, that's when the that's when they create openings amongst, you know, within the goal area. We've had four goals scored in the first four minutes of this fourth period. Kyle Nutto scored the last one to give a little bit of breathing room to his team from New York. This is Rob's second year with the Saints, and last year he was not known for his scoring prowess, but again, he's done done very well in, uh, in this 1992 season. Gorgeous again, wanting that right-handed shot. He gets nailed, tackled. And we'll take a short break and be back with more of the fourth quarter action. New York now with the commanding two-goal lead at the Nassau Coliseum. We'll be back with more of our fourth quarter. Cognato pushing the offense for New York as we rejoin the fourth quarter, 11 to 9 to score. But right now, Pittsburgh again is doing a good job of killing the penalty. Bill Willard in the uh, penalty box for Pittsburgh. And again, Pittsburgh playing well with one less man on the field. They almost scored. They had a fast break opportunity. Here's another one. Willard misses the net. It's all even now. Which Marino, he's got help in the cylinder, and Stevenson can't find it. Sal Acasio looking absolutely perfect in the goal. Sal playing very well, but I'll tell you, he looks tired tonight. He does look tired. At this point in the game, I would agree with you. They've got to put some better shots on him. I think he's beatable. Eight minutes left, two-goal lead. Stevenson takes a bounce shot. Marino is begging for the ball. He was right on the right pipe. They'll give it back to Pittsburgh. Marino will take it down low. And a two-goal lead right now, Leaf, with uh, eight minutes to go in the game is, is, not, is not a large margin at all. Trying to get a good shot. Marino comes around. Got the right hand. Takes it against Lacasio. They can't quite find that good shot. They're just missing the net. Or hitting him in the stomach. Good saves, though, by Lacasio to keep his team with a two-goal lead. Shot between the legs. Hayes, great save by uh, John Hayes or Bob Hayes. He's played well. He's played well the entire second half. Got a lot of pressure right in his face. A lot of those goals that they did score on him were right in front of him. Pittsburgh now changing the line. A little confusion by the bench. 7:22 left. 13 on the shot clock. They wasted a lot of time, Bill, getting those players on. But at the same time, the importance here, Leaf, is to get the tired players off because what's going to happen is they're going to have to go down and play defense now. And here they go. Reset. Here comes the head for Cummings gives it up, gets it back. Heil comes over to help. It'll be Bob Cummings who picks the ball back up. And the defense for Pittsburgh just digs in the trenches. Cummings comes in, and the whistle throw, no goal. I think there was an offensive interference there. It looked like they it looked like a uh, you know pulling guard play right there. Moving pick, possibly. Exactly. Clodson now gets the ball. He was also begging for the ball way up on the fast break, but New York got back very quickly. A shot inside. Stevenson has had a couple shots for Lacasio right there to make the save. Clodson just drills that one right into the ground. Bounces off the edge of the glass, if you can believe that, and out of bounds. They're, Pittsburgh is pointing, saying that went off a New York player. 
We'll see what they call here. They're giving the ball to Pittsburgh. Referees agree with it, and here comes Marino. He'll want to get a shot off here. He's had a couple saves, not the big goal, and he is capable of the big goal. Strong player with a tremendous velocity on his shot. He likes the right hand. Gorge is taking away his right hand. He goes left, bounces it to the far corner, and just misses. Ooh, Petromala has to go a long way to get that one. And the shot clock is winding down, so they're going to have to take a shot. It might not be their best selection. Seven on the shot clock, six and counting. Willard, you better look at it. Three, two, oh, right in the face mask of Lacasio, and he makes the save. If he's tired, he's not showing it too much. He's sticking in there when he has to. You've got tired players here, Bill Barroza. Oh, if he could just have hit that player. Well, Bob Hayes uh, could have could have created a two-on-one the other way for Pittsburgh, and, and it would have been a tough save for Sal Lucasio, but he overthrew his player. When you judge these goalies, outlet passes are a key ingredient to how good they are. Nobody's better than the guy from Detroit. Teddy Sawicki. He's the best, and partially because of his tremendous outlet passes. 5.30 left in the fourth quarter. This is it. The game is five minutes from being over, and Borges whips that bill for the fifth time. He's tried that shot from the right. Finally, he connects. He beats Hayes, 12 to nine, a three-goal lead. I think it was the fifth time in the third quarter, or the fourth quarter, excuse me. But uh, you know, you know, Donnie Borges is going to score eventually. Again, he's playing against not the best defensive player in the world. Butch Marino's an offensive player, and Donnie Borges drives and drives. And you're talking about 200 pounds there against 165. And he, you can just watch the play again. He uses his entire body and just puts it in that top right-hand corner. Borges finally connects, and that gives him a little bit of breathing room. Three goals, you start feeling like you've, you've got a little bit of breathing room. It takes that many in the indoor lacrosse league with all the offense being delivered. Matt Crowley gets the ball and double team there. Wilson now faked out. Crowley comes back and just can't find the net. Pushed into the corner. Everybody, Mike Smith trying to find it for Pittsburgh. Finally picked out in the corner by McCabe, I believe, or Reese gets up top. This is Purdy. Greg Purdy, who played field of I think he's on the Australian national team, wasn't he, Bill? Yeah, he was. And I'll tell you, that was another great save by Hayes. He's keeping him in the game. And again, with only three goal difference here, it's uh, it's not out of hand for Pittsburgh. They've got people that can score. They've got to get the shots, and that has been, I think, the weakest part of their game this year. They just don't get the volume of shots you need. Well, nobody's leaving the stadium here. Everybody knows that it, that you can score. You can score bunches quickly. Well, they're getting the shots here. I'll take my words back because they're getting a lot of good shots. And Sal Acasio is just turning them back. We'll take a short break and come back with the final moments of the fourth quarter. Right now, New York is in control by three. 2.49 left in the game, a three-goal lead for New York, and Lacasio still as hot as a pistol in that goal. He has really been sensational, turning back every bit of offense from Pittsburgh. Right now, Pittsburgh finds themselves in a power play situation. It's 5-1-4 with 2.28 left in the game. Scott Huff is in the box for the New York squad. Well, Pittsburgh's continuing, yeah, and Pittsburgh is looking for that for that answer in a, in a season where they're one and three now. They're looking for the answer. Dave Petromala is is part of the answer, but again, they're three goals back with two minutes to go. Martino gave it all he had. They had a great three-pass offense there, and Martino just flat out missed the corner. He was going for the corner shot. Two minutes left now. They had their chance in that fast break, Bill. They needed that badly. Well, they've had their chances tonight, and again, as I said, Dave, Petromala has played his heart out, two goals, two assists, but he can't do it all alone, and he needs some help. And we got to give some credit. Uh, I keep talking about shots and numbers up there, but Sal Acasio really has been taking a lot of his shots. There's probably a lot more than I really imagined in this game because Lacasio just keeps turning him back, turning him back. Well, I think he's got about 40 saves tonight, so he's been a steady performer playing well all night. Bob Engelke calls a timeout for the New York Saints with 1.33 left in the game. He's got a three-goal lead. He has possession of the ball, and he has what we consider quite possibly the MVP of the game, and Sal Lacasio playing in the goal. Tremendous game he has had. And if he is the MVP, we'll have a chance to find out how tired 
he is tonight. Ocasio waddles over there with that 500 pounds of equipment. Well, Coach Angle Key, if he can walk out of here with a win tonight, he's got to be a happy man. Uh, it keeps him on top of the American League. And again, a good shot at that at the title and a chance for the championship game. The situation, as we look at Dennis Way in Pittsburgh, the situation for New York is they are right now on top at 3-2, and two, tied with Baltimore. But Philadelphia is really starting to play strong. Philadelphia plays Baltimore again. If they end up in a tie with Baltimore, they do not win that tiebreaker. They would lose a tiebreaker to Baltimore. If they end up in a tie with Philly, they would win that tiebreaker. So they're looking at Baltimore and know, and they know they have to win at least, or end up at least a game ahead of the Baltimore Thunder. Well, New York plans are to win the rest of the games. So they want to, they want to win the next three games. Marino tries to thread the needle, but how about Lacasio coming up big? He has made. Saves and bunches, but finally gives up the Mark goal to Mark Gold. And Mark Gold comes in, puts intense pressure on a 117 left. Bill, we've seen goals scored uh, in big bunches here, like we've talked about all night. Scoring two more goals and winning the 17 is not that far away from possible. Well, what you talk about, we talk about lacrosse games and good play is the ability to pick up loose balls, and whoever does has the advantage. And you saw Marco pick up that loose ball. It's floating around there. Donnie Borges misses it. Andy Krause misses it. Finally, Marco does and gets a, not an easy goal, but a, but a well-deserved one. Marco gets his third goal of the game. The veteran does. And he will also face off this all-important face-off. This is a very critical face-off. Reese is in there, the strong player from Yale. And Mark Gold picks it up, bats it down. He had possession, but he didn't pick it up cleanly, and he gives it up to McEntee. This will be the clincher. McEntee wraps it around his shoulders, and it goes beyond the goal. Now, goalie Bob Hayes comes off. They're going to try a six on five. He's racing to the box. McEntee tries to tackle the player. He does. Martino gives it to the player coming in for the goalie. Now Martino's there. Back to the wing. Clodsden gives it to Stevenson. All the way over Martino. Marino, rather. Marino saying that one was in, but they do not give him the goal. 47 seconds left. And whoa, what a save by Lacasio. Well, that was a great save by Sal Acasio, and Pittsburgh did a great job at moving the ball. I, I thought that thing was going to be in for sure, and we'd be down to a one-goal game. They made the three passes. Here they go again. Marino has turned back one more time. I don't think there's any question that Sal Acasio is the MVP of this game. He has just turned back every bit of offense that Pittsburgh could muster, and they are unbelievably saddened by this turn over there. But the Pittsburgh bench knows they had the good shots, Bill, and they're over there slamming their fists on the board saying, what more do we have to do to beat Sal Acasio? Well, again, Sal's done a game in and game out. We talked about it, but again, he's got to be our Coors Light MVP for tonight. 25 seconds left. Two goal lead for the Saints. Pittsburgh had a handful of shots that could have turned it around. Bob Hayes there, the Pittsburgh goal, and there's the bench. They did all they could. They gave the great shots. Lacasio just filled up that net. And now it'll be a man down, it looks like, with Manley in the box for Pittsburgh. Just a matter of killing the clock now. There's no reason to even go to the goal. Pittsburgh's got to come out and play them. So they'll move the ball around. You'll see a lot of ball movement, no shot clock. Well, it's, it's almost an impossible situation because, again, New York's got the extra man out there on the floor, so eight seconds, seven and counting. That'll do it, and New York will advance their hopes for an American Division Championship. Pittsburgh gave it their all. Look at them all come out here, and Miles Salvatore, what a game he had. The all-pro goaltender came up big. He played a full four quarters against a very intense offense, maybe the best offense Pittsburgh has put together this year, and he ends up on the winning side. Well, Pittsburgh promised us an exciting game tonight when I saw him come in at the hotel earlier today, and uh, they said, we're going to give it a game. We got a chance to still win the, the National League. Well, they gave it a good game. Again, 12-10. Uh, Dennis Wade did what he said he wanted to, keep it low scoring. But there's our Coors Light MVP, Sal Lacasio. He did it all tonight. And we'll come back and showcase Sal Lacasio and his efforts as we continue with our coverage of Major Indoor League Lacrosse. Right now, though, the Saints take the game 12 to 10. We've got our final comments, our post-game interview. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Nassau Coliseum and get ready for our EMC Truck Play of the Game. 
Well, here's a guy that you count on to be a defensive player. Pat McCabe makes a sensational behind-the-back pass. Watch that pass to Rob Cognato cutting in. And again, a beautiful shot. Cognato, of course, comes in as the leading scorer on the New York team. That was the first goal of the game. It really set the tone for a fairly low-scoring game, but a game that New York never let get out of their grip. They were controlled the whole way. Yeah, it was a surprise how low-scoring it was, but Coach Way wanted it to be low-scoring so he could stay in it. And they and they gave us a heck of a game tonight. Well, Pittsburgh came out and they shot a lot of goals, a lot of shots on goal that really could have put them back in the game in the fourth quarter. The play of the game continually throughout the second half was made by the goalie, Sal Acasio. He is our Coors Light player of the game. And Sal Acasio had a tremendous day. 45 shots he faced, 35 saves. That's not a lot according to the stats he has put up day in and day out in the Major Indoor Lacrosse League. But Sal Acasio came up big when it counted. And Bill, in the fourth quarter, that's very tough in a close game. Well, I'll tell you, uh, Sal faced a lot of shots tonight. And one after the next, he kept staying strong in there. And again, he was the difference in the game. Again, a two-goal game, 12 to 10. And Sal Acasio will join us right now as the Coors Light player of the game. There's one of his many, many saves. Sal, big night for you. You, knew, you guys know how tough that American division is. You know you've got to win them all to have a chance to get into that championship game. We sure do. I mean, we have uh, we had three games left going into tonight. We were tied uh, first place with Baltimore, and, and Baltimore had beaten us, so they were really a game up on us. So the only thing we could do is, is go out and get a win and put a little pressure on them for their next game. Hey, Sal, uh, you had an outstanding game, no doubt about that. You're the Coors Light MVP. You looked a little bit tired. I mean, it wears on a goalie. Just tell us about it. It's tough, Billy. This is, uh, uh, last year I didn't play every game, the whole game, and this year I've been playing each game the whole game, and you have to, I've kind of tried to l not let myself get as emotional as I normally do when I'm playing to try to conserve some of my energy, and I think now I'm starting to get used to it, and I felt pretty strong today in the fourth quarter. Well, in that fourth quarter, you took a lot of shots in close range, took them right down the cylinder in very high percentage area of shooting. Did you see maybe a uh, Pittsburgh team that was shooting more than they had been earlier this season? Well, I, hadn't, I didn't really have a chance to see them too much. I watched their last game on Buffalo just to see some of their offensive players. Uh, no, I, I'm not so sure if they were shooting more than they normally do, and I was just trying to react to the, whatever they shot. Well, you had a great game. Uh, I guess we've got two games left, and should we uh, look for you to win the American League? Well, I hope so. I think uh, we played New England twice, and I think we can... Uh, if we beat those, if we can win those two games, uh, Baltimore has got to play at Buffalo, and Buffalo is coming on strong. And they also have to play home against Detroit, so they have some tough games. So hopefully, if we can win our last two games, we can put a little pressure on them. All right, we'll be watching you. Our congratulations to you tonight, Sal Acasio, for being our Coors Light player of the game. And continued luck and success to the New York Saints. I'd like to remind you that tonight's game is brought to you in part by the Long Island Marriott, the official home of the Major Indoor Lacrosse League and the New York Saints. We'll be back with our closing comments here from the Nassau Coliseum. Stay with us.